Learn to love the new Gmail interface. Since the introduction of the new Gmail interface, and more so since this became the standard experience, we have heard some pushback from users. It is the usual, I hate it, I don't like it, it's terrible, it's making me less productive. But these statements are actually nothing new. Those comments are from the last time that Google overhauled the Gmail interface, all the way back in 2011. Back then, I worked for a user design experience agency, and the team was 50-50 between liked it and loved it. However, eventually the team got on board with all the benefits that come along with a new interface. This time is no different. Like it, love it, or hate it, the new interface is here to stay. The rollback feature was supposed to be closed off in November 2022, but an amend to the schedule means that it is actually only from this week in some territories that you won't be able to roll back to the original view. That said, we made a video back in October explaining what I liked about the new Gmail interface. Let's remind ourselves of some of the reasons why the Gmail interface is actually significantly better. One of the biggest changes and often the hardest to reconcile is aesthetic. Google has made big changes to improve visibility and accessibility. Using color grading, the interface has a more distinct area for the inbox versus the navigation versus the actions. And the red text we were familiar with, which has poor usability for color blindness, has been removed. The narrow red compose call to action has been replaced with a compose bar at the top of the hover menu, increasing the touch area for easy access. The default blue helps the navigation to stand out and is better for accessibility as the color was chosen for its calming qualities. Now, the colour scheme has been a frustration for some. Red emails turn a faint blue now rather than the original grey. Many refer to it as tiger striping and some users have found this significant visually. If you are finding this problematic, we suggest changing your theme to the high contrast theme or to the light or soft grey to emulate the old aesthetic. If you are frustrated with having to access the hover menu to reach the Compose button, try engaging the Compose keyboard shortcut. Firstly, access the general settings, scroll to keyboard shortcuts and toggle these on. Once saved, you can now strike C on your keyboard when you're in the inbox page to open a new Compose window without having to access the main menu or hover menu. Big change has focused around the navigation, primarily in the separation of the navigation by application, the addition of text and icon, and a reorganization of labels in their menu. I find the old interface very cluttered when you hide the main menu. By trying to smoosh so much information in the left hand side, it resulted in a large amount of icons that don't really easily translate and personal labels that are completely anonymous. The hover menu helps by providing text. However, the cluttered feeling persists as the options revealed are not application specific. The new left-hand nav is clearer with the text and icon combination. Engaging the hover menu, I get only the menu for that application. This is most useful in the email hover menu where more space is made available for custom labels. So how about these labels? In the old navigation, custom labels appear in the middle of the default label between the drafts and important labels. This makes it clunky to access important labels like all mail or scheduled, Frustrating for me as I use the scheduled mail function daily and have to select the more chevron to access these labels. Also obscuring the labels are the other application menus. And if I have a robust selection of labels, yet I'm an active user of chat and spaces, these two functions fight for space on the left-hand navigation. In the new interface, each application is afforded its own pop-out menu, giving more real estate and better visibility. 
the email pop-out menu has a division grouping default and custom labels in separate sections, which makes for easier label location. The create new label functionality is relocated to the top of the custom label section, a very small adjustment that removes barriers to label creation. Furthermore, the manage label shortcut, which takes you to label settings, has been removed. A good move, I think, as the kebab menu gives sufficient functionality to manage labels in the interface as you go. All in all, these changes to the label functionality have been well received in the community, and I haven't heard many frustrations arising from the update to this function. Lastly, the chat and spaces functions. With increased visibility and changes in access, this is possibly the most controversial area to be changed. I find working in the old user interface, it can be easy to miss an incoming chat if you have the chat and spaces menu hidden or pushed down towards the bottom of the interface. Once you become aware of an incoming chat, it can take up to two clicks to access the menu and access the chat itself. Conversely, in the new interface, the chat and spaces icon is at eye line when working in your emails and therefore easier to spot. And the appearance of a notification bubble further draws the eye. From the notification bubble or the chat icon, a hover pop out means that the chat can be accessed in one click. It seems two issues have come out of this. A small change in the chat functionality has become frustrating for users. The chat now defaults to opening in full screen from the bubble and from the chat hover menu, which takes you out of the Gmail interface and into the chat interface. This for some users breaks their working flow. Never fear, there is a customization that you can apply. Firstly, access the chat and meet setting tab and launch chat settings. Inside the settings, toggle off open chat bubble in full screen. This will stop that default when you click the bubble and instead open a pop-up inside the Gmail interface. Now, accessing from the chat menu, you will need to use the open in pop-up icon. If you work with some colleagues or spaces frequently in your working day, I would suggest using the pop out and minimize options. To do this, open your regularly accessed spaces or chats in a pop up at the top of the day. Minimize each pop up, which then becomes a bubble on the left hand navigation. By clicking the bubble to access your chat and minimizing it to return to the nav throughout the day, you can easily work with pop-ups as you are working in your emails. There is a limiter here, which seems to be display size. On my 13 inch laptop display, I can have five bubbles in my navigation at a time. But moving my browser into my 27 inch monitor, I can work with up to 12 bubbles in the navigation at any time. The flip side is that for some, they don't want the chat feature integrated into their Gmail. This is a much easier fix as from quick settings, you can simply turn off the apps in Gmail. Those apps being chat and spaces or meet. You now can use a desktop app or a standalone browser to access the chat app. For me, my work is achieved in a number of different spaces and the detail level in those chats means that toggling between full scale applications inside of my Gmail UI is really squaring the circle for me in my working practices. Outside of that, Google is working really hard to make good on that promise to truly unify communications into a singular hub. They have been adding lots of functionality like allowing your calendar to update your chat status, adding summaries to quickly catch up in spaces, and the ability to review a document screen in screen with your chat space. I think we are going to see more steps in the coming year to really deepen that integration and improve the chat and spaces experience. Now that we're all working from the same hub, that is possible. So watch this space. If you have developed any interesting working practices inside the new Gmail interface, please, we'd love to know your hacks. Until next week, take care. <laughs>